we got two more things to kind of close up shop with here. One, I, I want to, we would do when I end up with Cl- uh, Carlos Hyde because while we were uh, here on Saturday, the news broke about Carlos. So we might as well touch on that for a little bit without any crazy investigation on him. Um, but I do, I do want to talk about just like when you're drafting rookies, is there, w- would you rather swing for the fences in the whole rookie draft or is there a spot where you kind of stop swinging for the fences or are you kind of, playing it a little more safe like in a startup we're kind of telling you just don't fuck it up um and then there's spots where you know maybe you take a couple of swings here or there as things progress down the line a little bit and sometimes you're forced to take that shot a little earlier um but more so in a rookie draft are you are you swinging for the fences the whole time i know i know big co that that's, that's probably a little bit more your strategy in that situation it is for is the- there a, and, and, then, and is there a spot where you maybe tone it back down a little bit and and go well obviously conservative obviously that's a loaded question but sure we a lot of like on our patreon page how many times have you seen somebody list their draft picks and they got like one three one eight one nine something like that you know so if you got if you just got one draft pick you know you haven't traded much or whatever however it falls out and you got the one two or the one six or the one ten obviously your options are limited the later back you get Mm -hmm. into your in your draft pick but if you have, if I have just my one draft pick, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm probably looking for a running back unless I have no choice. And I and, think that's probably mitigating some of your risk. Yeah, I'm, prob- I'm probably. I'm, that's fair. I, I'm, I'm for the most part. I want to. Sh- I, I like what I, I like the way you set that up because it is kind of. I I really do like to try to not mess up the 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 startup as far as backing off coming through five six eight rounds of a dynasty startup i don't care if i have any rookies or not i'm not reaching super young i'm not going super old one way or the other even if i'm trying to win now we talked about this on the patreon show a couple weeks ago you can get out you can have a Devonte adams and a juju smith schuster or whatever studs that are helping you win now and still super young studs or whatever so if in a, in a rookie draft i'm getting away from don't messing it up and don't you know not messing it up and trying to get that best play, you know, not necessarily best player available, but highest ceiling because you want to hit a home run. I do want to focus on that. But those times, if you have like the one six and the one eight or the one two, one five, one eleven, or whatever, you try obviously the earlier the pick, you're assumably getting getting somebody with a higher ceiling anyway. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. But somewhere in there, you're like, all right, I can take this guy safe. It's an asset, or it's somebody. Some people like him. Half the half the community love him to death. So if it's not a home run in the first twelve months, I still have that some There's name some name equity in, uh, some, cachet. Yeah, give me some brand equity on somebody that I might not be a hundred percent in love with, but I know half the room loves to death that type of thing. So I I will go back and forth on swinging for the fences versus a little safety. Obviously, a lot of it has to do with your team. If you're a good team, you can you're definitely swinging for the fences. And if you're a bad team, you should probably still be swinging for the fences. Right. You know, you still want to hit a home run, but there's nothing wrong with a couple of doubles. It's mm. just yeah. depending on where you, you don't want to. You're not hitting a. You're, you're not looking for a double if you're picking it to one three, one four. You're looking for a home run. If you're at the one eight, one nine, one ten, there's nothing wrong with trying to get a a stand up triple or something fun like that. Yeah. It doesn't. You don't have to knock it out of the park. Just don't, you know, sometimes you take a guy who's just complete swing and then, you know, you fall out of your cleats, ball, bats you on the ground. If you're in the one eight one nine, and are you taking the guy that you're, you're kind of supposed to take there? Or are you, are you like, well, let, let's, let's say a couple of years ago, you know, maybe you were at the one eight or, or so, and it was the Kamara draft and OJ Howard was there and I, th- I think I feel like he was maybe a little higher up consensus wise mm-hmm. than maybe the Kamara's in the hunts of the world so uh, were you kind of more so staying in your lane at that point or were you were you maybe swinging a little harder and going with the running back situation obviously it's con- roster construction a little bit but OJ Howard was one of those kind of transcendent players at, yeah. that, at that point in time that's a good point that we have a team where that year we had the we didn't have a first round pick the prior year we had traded everything we got zeke and bell on the same team we had just won the championship coming off a championship and we traded into the one eight spot and took oj howard and we didn't have any other spot we didn't have any other draft picks early because we had really build a conglomerate right there and these are early these are early drafts and this is an FFPC that was an ffpc team. early team this was a couple years ago we traded into the one eight during the draft to take OJ Howard and but we didn't have any of other other spots 
And in that in in that year's class, I did a lot of Alvin Kamara at one ten, one twelve, and two one. I got him in those three types of draft picks. And I, obviously, hindsight being twenty twenty, we would all take a ha- Kamara at one 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 two one three where need be. But I felt like I was there was a couple times where I wasn't letting him get past me if I could get him on the clock. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know that was just one time I got. I think I got maybe a little lucky too. That, you know, you there's plenty of times where I was like, well, this guy's not getting past me, and he wasn't. He hadn't been too good. Right. Nelson Aguilar comes to mind. He what? <laughs> sure. You know, took him at one seven years back, and so that was that fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, yeah, three or four years back now, and and that hadn't paid off a whole lot. Yeah. You know. Uh, that, or that, yelled that, in, and that's kind of right sure, sure, and that kind of soured you on probably receivers at that point when. Nelson didn't help our draft and such i i wasn't taking them but th- those that that year and a year before that all those other you know the paramans and the, all those kind of guys kevin whites the kevin whites and the paramans and parker the, the devontae parker I still hadn't panned out which right i'm still i'm buying oh, still give me some cheap devontae parker for sure jay wayne uh i guess kind of same question you, you swinging for the fences most of the draft here or are you just kind of trying to Play it safe, or is there a spot where you maybe switch gears? I I don't think that there's really a clear cut answer to that question for me. I I don't I don't either. I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, I'm going to swing for the fences. That's kind of yeah, why I followed up safe. with the question that I did a little bit. Yeah, I think I felt uh, that put you in a decent situation. I mean, Corey touched on it. it. It it depends on the makeup of your team. I like to build a roster where I have a, a core of safe players and some risky players because I think you need someone in your lineup with some risk to, to put you over the top. But I think you also need some guys in there that you need some Jarvis Landry. You need a strong need, core of, of safety nets. Right. And so I, I want some of each. And when it comes to a rookie draft specifically, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the overall makeup of my team and, and do I have any risks or do I have a bunch of safe players? And then it's really just, I mean, who do you like? Who do you feel, you know, re- deep down – you know, I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Who, who do you want? It's two for one. You know, Take like to me, rocket. to me, Daryl Henderson is is a risky type player this year. That 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 I think is a guy like Kamara, where he has some upside, but you don't know if it's going to pan out. I, I I would I'm way higher on Kamara coming out of college than I am currently on Daryl Henderson. But I think there's going to get to a point in the late first round, early second round, where Daryl Henderson's sitting around, and you're like, do I do I take a swing for the fence on this guy who I saw hit a bunch of home runs in college or not? And and I, I would I think I'm leaning towards not doing that because I don't like the player as much. But mm-hmm. if I really like the player, then I think I'm down to, to take more of a risk. Mm-hmm. And I think you got to take guys that you like. I think and if you don't know, if you don't know if you like a guy or not, then I think you should play it safer. Yeah. I think you should take the safer pick. But I, I I think it just depends on who you like and the makeup of your team and and I don't think you can just pigeonhole yourself into how am I gonna do this It's got to come to you It's got to yeah. be different in every situation and it's gonna yeah, it's no, gonna change and evolve I think I think I think it's a decent answer from both of you guys I think it's 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 also very draft dependent And back to the you asked him about Kamara and OJ Howard like unless I'm in a two tight end league where I have to start two tight ends. Well, and even premium. I'm probably not taking a OJ Howard in the first and Ingram round. were pretty transcendent players, and they did hold value pretty well. And now yeah. OJ Howard's kind of back up, and Ingram held was a fourth round pick. I mean, bef- I, the year before, and now he's kind of fallen back. And those two have kind of flip flopped. Right, areas. I, I had two four in 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 one rookie draft when when Ingram was a rookie, and I feel like he was a tear break there after that guy. It was a different tier of players. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a tier break kind of situation i felt pretty good swinging for the fences on this tight end even though i felt like i was good because i had eifert and i had doyle and maybe another guy and so i thought like i was just basically taking a luxury pick with evan ingram but i really liked the player Mm -hmm. and i felt like he was a a swing for the fences but he also basically closed the chapter on that tier of players and then now there's another (laughs) tier of guys that aren't quite in the same realm so if you're at like a tier break and you want to take a swing, and you like the guy, I'm down to swing for the fences. So I, I think that's a little bit of where I was heading with what I was saying is like just kind of dr- draft by draft. It's it's where are you at? What does your team need? I know this is a little bit of a cop-out answer, but it's just 
It, it's it's the kind kind of the way it goes. Well, people want to know what should I do? Like it it's different every time, and right. you have to feel it out. And you can't. I don't want to tell you to do this every time because it's not going to apply every time. Right. It, it, it's it's so and it's just it's it's so fluid and in all these different situations. <laughs> Do you want? That's, see, that was a good one. That's top well three. Done. That top was, three. Top three. It's, it's the new room. Just settle down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. We need to get a couple. You, and you've been hitting me with those weak it's bush just, pops. These things. Have you been, can't even call them pops. He's really like set me up to look better than it is. So can I jump in with a little clarity? <laughs> yeah. 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 So now this thing's going around the room one time, what, what, and you what? say, "All right, crazy big co." What do you, or maybe little co? How do you think? Uh, how is going to be bigger? Than, he's standing to make it look bigger. How you? Uh, well, no, you, lay, you lay down to make it look bigger. What happened? I didn't mean what? to say it. I meant to say him. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it. It was a, it really was the wrong word. Really screwed up. Walked away from a good desk chair this morning at a yard sale. <laughs> Two hours later, Jason calls me and says, "You're going to need a chair." I'm scrambling, calling my neighbors to check and see if that chair's still out there at the yard sale. So anyway. Um, how do you how do you hit a stand up triple? You know, if you're not sold on somebody, or like Jay says, maybe you just missed the tear break. Like last year in an FFPC draft, I'm looking, I'm at one ten, and Carry On Johnson goes at one nine, and I'm on tilt, and I spend the next two hours trying to trade that dude from one ten up to one nine to get Carry On Johnson, and I just was getting killed, couldn't get it happen. So I traded back, got a first round pick next year to get out of that pick because I was uh, upset, but trading that 110 or the 15 or what have you if or even the 11 for a stud like even if you are not dead set on a rookie and you're trying to maybe swing for the fence or hit that double hit that triple and not mess it up how are you switching gears keeping that open mind about on the clock or day of the draft leading up to the draft bringing a proven player into it getting some like you know trading Last year, obviously, Doug Baldwin didn't get hurt preseason before we made his trade, but I, we gave away the 110 for Doug Baldwin before the draft last year. And super happy to get Doug Baldwin go for that price. Right. The year before, he was a third-round startup pick. All of a sudden, he's 30, and he's worthless. And yet, he hurt his knee in preseason, and that definitely put a damper on things. But mm -hmm. that's my, like... And they want to run the ball for, more for, than to me, in the league. Right. Well, they said they were doing that, but and you know, you give... I, Obviously, going back on it, it's like, I probably could have done something that, given what Doug Baldwin did last year, I definitely could have used 110. But the idea being the same, like for me, that was, I was a stand up triple all day long. Mm -hmm. You took the guess out of it, you took 110, turned it into Doug Baldwin, and now you got a Pro Bowl receiver that, you know, maybe he gets three or four more years. Right. And then which, he hurts his knee and he didn't. Which would kind of be like well. taking the guess out of it and just taking Philip Lindsay at the 1 5. Oof. Mm, womp womp some crickets on that one. <laughs> well, oh. I'm just saying. You just well, I mean, I know, I know. It's a one one year deal. One five Doug, versus gotcha. one ten. Know, you know, there's know, a lot more I'm guessing. Just, the farther uh, just, theoretically, just, theoretically, you talk to the guys that drafted uh, stoking some fire. Here. That drafted some bad, some wide receivers in the first five picks sure. over the last five years, and tell me how that worked out. Sure. Um, but th theoretically, the farther back you go, the more guessing you do. And right. just so you know, I'll trade the 110 this year for any Pro Bowl wide receiver. Yeah. You know, I, that's, I'll take a stand-up triple instead of swinging for the fences and maybe fouling it off and yeah. hitting it, you I, know, I, I or like, striking out. I like that. I like that uh, idea for sure. All right. Well, that, that kind of wraps up that question. You, you guys want to do a little Carlos Hyde before we close up shop here? Sure. <laughs>